In this video, we will define fraud and discuss the fraud triangle. We will also discuss internal controls with an emphasis on one of the five components, control activities. We will discuss the activities or the policies and procedures a company can implement to reduce the occurrence of fraud. Internal controls are extremely important. In fact, Congress passed a law requiring public companies, those that sell their stock to the general public, to maintain a system of internal controls. Fraud is a dishonest act by an employee that results in personal benefit to the employee at the cost of the employer. Examples of fraud reported in the financial press include a shipping clerk with 28 years of service shipped $125,000 of merchandise to himself. Another example is a computer operator embezzled $21 million from Wells Fargo over a two-year period. The three elements of the fraud triangle are opportunity, financial pressure, and rationalization. For fraud to occur, all three elements must be present. The most important element of the fraud triangle is opportunity. Opportunities occur when the workplace lacks sufficient controls to deter and detect fraud. A second factor that contributes to fraud is financial pressure, which is usually related to too much personal debt or a desire for a better lifestyle. The third factor that contributes to fraud is rationalization. In order to justify their fraud, employees rationalize their dishonest actions. For example, employees sometimes justify fraud because they believe they are underpaid while the employer is making lots of money. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in another file. After numerous corporate scandals in early 2000, Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, or SOX, which requires all publicly traded U.S. corporations to maintain an adequate system of internal controls. In addition, corporate executives and board directors must ensure that these controls are reliable and effective. Independent outside auditors must attest to the adequacy of the internal control system. Companies that fail to comply are subject to fines and company officers can be imprisoned. SOX also created the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, PCAOB, to establish auditing standards and to regulate auditor activity. The purposes of internal control are to safeguard assets like inventory and cash, enhance the reliability of accounting records, increase efficiency of operations, as well as ensure compliance with laws and regulations. Each of the five components of an internal control system is important. In this video, we will focus on one component, the control activities. These activities are the backbone of the company's efforts to address the risk it faces, such as fraud. To reduce fraud, management must design policies and procedures to address the specific risk faced by the company. The six principles of control activities are establishment of responsibility, segregation of duties, documentation procedures, physical controls, independent internal verification, and human resource controls. We will explain each of these six principles in detail and apply them to a movie theater. An essential principle of internal control is to assign responsibility to specific employees. Control is most effective when only one person is responsible for a given task. Let's illustrate this principle using the AMC movie theater at Rio. They typically have two cashiers. Only cashiers are authorized to sell tickets and each cashier is responsible for their cash register. Let's assume the cash on hand at the end of the day is $10 short. 
If only one person has operated the cash register, the manager can quickly determine responsibility for the shortage. Establishing responsibility often requires limiting access only to authorized personnel. Segregation of duties is crucial in an internal control system. It limits fraud and promotes the accuracy of the accounting records. There are two common applications of this principle. The first is different individuals should be responsible for related activities. A movie theater implements this principle when they have both a cashier and a door person. The duties of collecting cash and admitting customers or collecting tickets are assigned to two employees. Having one employee do both jobs would be less expensive, but that single employee could easily steal cash and admit a customer without issuing a ticket. If different employees perform the task, a successful theft requires the participation of both employees. The second application of this principle is the responsibility for record keeping for an asset should be separate from the physical custody of that asset. This is especially important for cash and inventories because these assets are very vulnerable to fraud. Documents such as a sales invoice or a purchase order provide evidence that transactions and events have occurred. Companies should use pre-numbered documents and all documents should be accounted for. Pre-numbering helps to prevent a transaction from being recorded more than once or from not being recorded at all. At a movie theater, the tickets are pre-numbered. The control system should require that employees promptly forward source documents for accounting entries to the accounting department. This control measure helps to ensure timely recording of the transactions and contributes directly to the accuracy and reliability of the accounting records. The use of physical controls is essential. Physical controls relate to the safeguarding of assets and enhance the accuracy and reliability of the accounting records. This slide shows examples of these controls. A movie theater uses a safe to store cash and a machine is used to issue pre-numbered tickets. The rolls of tickets are typically inserted and locked into the machine by the manager at the beginning of each shift. Most internal control systems provide for independent internal verification. This principle involves the review of data prepared by employees. For example, at the movie theater, cash counts are made by the manager at the end of each cashier's shift. Daily comparisons are made by the company treasurer. Large companies often assign independent internal verification to internal auditors. Internal auditors are company employees who continuously evaluate the effectiveness of a company's internal control systems. They review the activities of departments as well as individuals to determine whether internal controls are being followed. Human resource controls include bonding employees who handle cash. Bonding involves obtaining insurance protection against theft by employees. A movie theater can bond their cashiers. Another control activity is to rotate employees' duties as well as require employees to take vacations. These measures deter employees from attempting theft since they will not be able to permanently conceal their actions. Lastly, companies can conduct background checks. Many believe that the most important and inexpensive measure any business can take to reduce employee theft and fraud is for the Human Resources Department to conduct thorough background checks. 
companies generally design their systems of internal control to provide reasonable assurance of safeguarding their assets and reliability of the accounting records. The concept of reasonable assurance rests on the premise that the cost of establishing control procedures should not exceed their expected benefit. Controls may vary with the risk level of the activity. Management may consider cash to be high risk and maintaining inventories in the stock room lower risk. As a result, management would have stricter controls for cash. The human element is an important factor in every system of internal control. A good system can become ineffective as a result of employee fatigue, carelessness, or indifference. Two or more individuals can work together to get around the controls. This is referred to as collusion. Collusion can significantly reduce the effectiveness of a system by eliminating the protection offered by segregation of duties. If the employees of a movie theater, such as the cashier and door person, work together, they could agree to say the ticket machine is broken and admit customers without issuing a ticket or recording a cash sale. At the end of the day, they could split all the stolen cash. Unfortunately, the size of the business may also impose limitations on internal control. A small company may find it difficult to segregate duties or provide for independent internal verification. A study found that businesses with fewer than 100 employees are most at risk for employee theft. 